Today I'm going to take a look at how we get better audio into a computer or indeed a smartphone like this in order to record audio tracks or in this case you could be recording uh, a video on your smartphone if you wanted to get really good audio. Then you need to go in not through the mini jack socket which is the headphone adapter as well but through the USB socket. Now a firm in Holland called Technical Dell Art has produced a small USB audio interface. So there's a USB socket on one end, the audio interface which is also a microphone preamp, a very high quality one, and also a 3-pin XLR jack socket on the other end. This little interface enables you to amplify the microphone sound cleanly up to about 40, 40 dB or 45 dB to use a condenser microphone which is battery powered with your smartphone or computer. In fact you can also use a dynamic microphone and we'll have a look at that in a moment. Now in order to, I've bought the uh, USB-A uh, connector which enables me to go straight into a laptop and in order to connect to my smartphone which is uh, a very old one then I use an OTG cable to connect that socket to the micro USB socket but you can buy the cable direct from uh, the manufacturers with uh, the latest USB-C connector at the end but I prefer to be able to connect into the computer with a standard USB and then have an adapter to get into the smartphone. Now the advantage of the Mickey Digital as it is called is that it has the ability to have three presets already uh, saved into the uh, dongle itself and you can just flick a switch to select whichever you want. So you can set the sensitivity from a very low sensitivity right up to 70 odd dB although in practice you can't really go beyond 40 or 50 dB without starting to get a little bit of noise. I've now connected the Mickey Digital to my smartphone and uh, to this Audio Technica condenser microphone which is battery powered because the Mickey Digital doesn't have phantom power so you can only use self-powered microphones which are either battery powered although it is uh, capable of taking a dynamic microphone which doesn't require any power at all. Now the Mickey Digital can be set to various gain levels. Now for this microphone which is condenser I only need 35 dB of gain and at that level there is absolutely no circuit hiss at all from the Mickey Digital circuits. In fact it's about the same as recording through a professional recorder. I've now plugged in a dynamic microphone which is uh, much less sensitive. I've still left the gain setting at 35 dB as we use for the condenser microphone but that really isn't enough for this microphone so I'm going to switch it up to 45 dB. So that's 45 dB with the dynamic microphone. Now this dynamic microphone only outputs about 1.1 or 1.5 millivolts. You can get modern ones that go much higher than that to about 2 or possibly 2.8 which would be far better but uh, this works fine at 45 dB into the Mickey Digital without any noise gate applied. Now there is a little bit of circuit noise which develops from about 45 dB of gain. Now in most situations you wouldn't notice that at all, only in a very quiet room. If you were outside it wouldn't be noticeable. But I can switch in the noise gate which I've tuned in to take out the circuit noise for this uh, circuit at this level. So I'll now do that. So that's the dynamic microphone, 45 dB of gain with the noise gate switched in. And uh, since we didn't really seem to get much noise on 45 dB of gain for the Mickey Digital, I thought we'd crank that up now to 50 dB and try that with the dynamic microphone. Now this is 50 dB of gain with the noise gate set in which has been tuned for 50 dB of gain. So uh, this can sound quite reasonable but if you do happen to make a hand noise on the microphone then the gate will trip in and out. And this is the Mickey Digital without the noise gate in place. So you can hear there at 50 dB of gain, there is 
quite audible background noise. You probably wouldn't hear that outside, but uh, certainly in this quiet studio room, then you can hear the hiss. So let's now have a look at the software that uh, enables us to do all these fancy tricks with the Mickey Digital. It's called Mickey D software and it comes free with the uh, dongle. You just plug in the dongle to your computer, which enables you to download the uh, Mickey Digital interface, which controls a variety of things from the gain level to low cut filter to equalization high and low and this very clever noise gate, as well as enable you enabling you to fix the uh, gain levels and the headphone levels uh, so that things, if you transfer it between different devices, things don't jump about. The gain levels stay the same. So what do I think about the Mickey Digital? Well, it's an excellent little device because it's so small you can just pop it into your pocket. The heaviest part is the XLR socket on the end of it. But of course you do need a microphone, although you needn't have uh, a large microphone. You could have a very small one, provided that it's self-powered. You could even use a self-powered lapel mic. And there are many battery-powered microphones around. You can even have a battery-powered directional microphone, a shotgun mic. So if you're filming with the Mickey Digital, and uh, a smartphone, then you're well equipped to get excellent sound. Well, I'm now checking out the Mickey D outside in a bit of a noisy environment. We've just got the emergency helicopter flying overhead. So the Mickey D is connected now to a Sennheiser directional microphone, which is battery powered, direct to the smartphone via the Mickey D adapter and uh, an OTG cable. So this is a fairly limited output microphone, but the Mickey D only needs to be set at 35 dB of gain. I think it outputs about 6 millivolts, this particular shotgun, when it's battery powered. So I'll now swap this out and uh, we'll listen to an omnidirectional microphone, uh, which is also a battery powered condenser. So this is the Audio-Technica AT10A battery-powered condenser microphone which is omnidirectional so there'll be a little bit more uh, environmental noise from the aircraft, the helicopter above although it's gone a little bit further away now. So again this is set at 35 dB of gain on the Mickey D and there's no uh, noise gate applied for this. So I'll now swap out and we'll listen to a dynamic microphone, which is a bit more of a challenge for the Mickey D to cope with. So this is a hypercardioid dynamic microphone, and for the moment I've just left it on the same setting as the uh, two previous condensers, which was 35 dB of gain, which is rather low. So I'll now switch the Mickey D up to 45 dB of gain to cope with this uh, dynamic microphone. So that's 45 dB of gain on the dynamic microphone and the volume levels there should be much better, much better uh, sound levels. So the dynamic microphone only outputs about 1.1 to 1.5 volts maximum, millivolts maximum. So uh, it is quite a low output microphone and requires quite a bit of amplification. So it's really only properly usable uh, at this sort of level, uh, close to the mouth. Now this is without the noise gate applied. I want to see what the noise gate sounds like, uh, whether it trips in and out with the external noise that we've got in the environment. And so I'll now switch the noise gate in on this uh, dynamic microphone. So there we are with the noise gate switched in on the dynamic microphone, which is set at uh, 45 dB of gain. And the noise gate uh, really just is intended to get rid of the circuit noise at this level, but actually outside you won't really hear any of the circuit noise because the general environmental noise is going to be much higher than the slight amount of hiss you get at 45 dB of gain from the Mickey D.